What's going on guys? Off season is upon us. Lifting is going good. Uh, one of the things that I always try to harp on for lifters, especially ones coming off of meets, is you know being smart with exercise selection, being smart with programming, and making sure that you are doing the right assessments to move forward in your progression. And what I mean by that is usually after a meet, particularly for me, I'll I won't really do much the first week. I'll get back in the gym and I'll do a lot of dumbbell work. I'll do a lot of uh, high repetition stuff and I'll do a wide variety of things just to kind of see, you know, if there are any aches or pains um, that may have occurred during the meet or the meat prep that uh, I really wasn't too aware of. So I'll do that the first week and then from there, I'll start to build out a plan uh, leading in for the rest of the off season or at least for the first block. And typically what I see and what I do with myself is whenever you're getting ready for a meet, you're doing a lot of movement with the squat, bench, and deadlift, which are bilateral movements in one plane of motion. So what I like to do is switch it up a little bit and start using some unilateral movements, which I'll show you in the videos coming up. Uh, outlining some of the off-season work that I'm doing and I'll make sure that we move through different planes of motion so I'll do a lot of side lunges I will do a lot of walking lunges reverse lunges um, overhead pressing single arm uh, dumbbell work and doing a lot of you know things like that that are variations um, that I'm not used to higher rep ranges lighter weight and just working on kind of like prehabbing um, any injuries or any things that I need to work on. For me, particularly this off season, I am really focused on improving my range of motion in external and internal rotation and also improving my range of motion in my hips. Um, towards the end of the meet, uh, I brought my stance in, which created a lot of strength, but also created a lot of hip issues um, that I'm still kind of dealing with right now. It feels pretty good, but it's just kind of feels like something's catching in there that's kind of generating down the rest of my left leg um, into my calf. So I'm just working on that, working through that, and uh, just trying to fix those things as a priority. And then also, if I'm able to do that and increase my external and internal rotation, then I'll be able to increase my pressing frequency without injury, increase my overhead pressing, and really just build a better, more well-rounded, structured program um, that'll help me progress into my next meet prep. So that's the plan and that's what I do with a lot of my athletes coming off of meets is just making sure that we do a full assessment of what's going on, what could be going wrong, and uh, fixing it. You know, the biggest issue I see is a lot of people, they'll come out of a meet and they'll go right back into the same compound movements that they've been doing for the past 12 weeks and they'll just do it at a higher, higher rep range. So what that does is that creates a lot of wear and tear on imbalances and issues that you've already created going through this meat prep and through the higher end hypertrophy work or you know the higher volume you're just repeatedly beating down um, the imbalances and the issues over and over again by doing the same exact thing instead of taking the time to kind of put the barbell down put the competition movements away and just focusing on variations that'll build focusing on variations that'll uh, help align the body so it's moving better it's functioning better and that way whenever you're ready to do those compound movements you build bigger muscles through variations and hypertrophy work and you feel a lot healthier so those are a few things to take into consideration while you're getting ready for your uh, off season or if you have a meet coming up what to do after the meet and uh, as you guys follow along with the training that uh, I'm gonna be doing you'll be able to see some of the stuff that I'm implementing and kind of the hows and whys behind it all all right so let's get into the training guys um, so I'll go into next video or a couple videos down the road I'll go into it more in-depth uh, approach of my off season plan and how I got things set up but this day was uh, conventional pulls back and some strongman work. Um, I feel like conventional pulls are pretty much the building block for, for building up um, a strong squat and both the deadlifts. Um, and kind of just building up your back, your posterior chain, and getting everything uh, nice and strong.
from the deadlift is uh, is what carries over to the squat and what carries over into um, all of the uh, all of the other deadlift variations. So I mean, obviously, uh, we've thrown in uh, sumo deadlifting on uh, Wednesdays just to make sure that we're technically sound with the lift and that we uh, continue to try to master the the technique and all the nuances and getting those muscles strong. So we don't want to neglect that completely, or at least that's what I found. Some people. Um, and some of my clients, I can completely go into conventional training and then they'll be good for sumo. Um, did some yoke walks too, uh, worked up to 800 pounds here just for fun, uh, builds up the core, um, helps build up a lot of the stabilizers within your lower body and I feel like just being able to walk with heavy loads and being uh, somewhat active and somewhat mobile with heavy loads is just overall health wise is really good for you. Uh, here's some of the unilateral work we're doing. Uh, here's Kaylee doing some kettlebell bottoms up presses. Uh, I got this from Jordan Shallow, the muscle doc on Instagram. And it's just a really good way to build up stabilizers and continue to get a healthier and uh, stronger shoulder. And then we moved into some single arm uh, overhead dumbbell presses. Same concept here. Uh, what I what I can what I found with this is that it allows me to lean a little bit which helps me with my lack of range of motion in my shoulder. So I'm able to do these presses uh, with less pain and less, uh, less chance of injury than I would if I had both dumbbells in my hand. And uh, this was Kaylee's first time doing it, so you know, talking to her the next couple days, she was wondering why her abs were so sore and you know, different muscles were sore, and it's because we're doing this unilateral work to really, really target some of the weaker areas and um, allow us to use lighter weight to get stronger as well you know especially in the off season not everything is about using maximal loads uh, last training cycle uh, i tell a lot of people my off season i don't think i squatted over 400 pounds because i used a lot of pre-exhaust stuff and i did a lot of front squats and stuff like that and the lighter rep range is just building up bigger stronger muscles and i put on you know 50 pounds to my squat so here it is on the, the leg day of the week uh, my back was pretty sore from conventional and just getting back into training so what we did was we turned it into more of a, a bodybuilding style day uh, started off with some hack squats and doing stuff to kind of just take the load off of uh, off of the lower back so we didn't do any barbell squats we didn't do any uh, barbell movements really that day just to make sure that we're easing into the training and being smart with it and being productive with every session uh, doing some walking lunges more of the unilateral stuff, more of working on things that we've been neglecting and getting stronger and uh, moving and doing things outside of the one plane of motion that we've been used to doing. So I think these are a great way uh, to warm up and they're also a great exercise to throw in. Um, they suck, they hurt, they make your lungs burn, but they're probably one of the better exercises to build up um, overall leg mass. Um, you know, and you got to ease into it using dumbbells and then going into a barbell and then going into other stuff to make the loads heavier um, is a good progression to do. Just, you know, starting off with body weight, just doing higher reps just to build it up is a good progression. Um, typically, whenever I go into off season, I'll increase the frequency of squats. When I do that, I really pay a lot of attention to knee health. So I throw in a lot of TKEs. I throw in a lot of exercises that will continue to prehab and prevent um, more preventative measures to keep the knee healthy. So here's a variation of that. It's on the, um, in detail, it's on TM Nutrition underscore on Instagram is our uh, team Instagram page where we post training videos, tutorials, uh, progress of our athletes and stuff. So make sure you guys go check out that Instagram and you can get a full detail of these uh, TKE variations. So moving on to the next day, uh, doing some feet up benching and everything, you know, you'll get the gist of uh, off season programming is just doing stuff, doing variations that make it harder with less weight, you know, because your, your body only knows, you know, intensity, it knows load, but if you can create an exercise and make it harder with lighter weight, your body will have the same adaptation as if you had heavier load in there. And it's all about trying to stay healthy and continue to uh, create a stimulus and adaptation for your body to grow 
you know, while not trying to always push maximal loads. And uh, I think that that is a huge idea that, or a paradigm shift that needs to happen in powerlifting, where people aren't always training for Instagram, they're actually training to get better. Uh, here we are with some deep dumbbell incline single arm presses, another good variation to build up some unilateral strength. I appreciate you guys for watching. As always, make sure you like, subscribe, and share, and I'll catch you guys next time.